What's going on, you guys? Monologue video. Have a day one of these a little minute, but there's a few things that I want to kind of talk about. Just kind of random, right? I was scrolling through Facebook, seen a particular photo. Salute to my boy at B House Promotions. It was Blue Blood Sports TV and Terrence Bug Crawford. So it's looking like Blue Blood Sports TV is Team TBC once again. And it's funny because over the years, it seemed like Blue Blood, most of his audience seemed like they're they favorite Errol Spence Jr. But you see right here, Blue Blood Sports TV and Terrence Bud Crawford squashed whatever. You know, it seemed like Team Crawford had some type of anim they had animosity with Blue Blood because Blue Blood was really pushing these narratives out here. Right? He was really, really agenda pushing, really, really pushing these narratives. And Team Crawford, like, man, all that shit is bullshit, all that shit is cap. Where are you hearing this information? Well, now they since then squashed the beef. And Blue Blood Sports TV is Team TBC. It was something I seen earlier today. Salute to Bruce Vane. It was a good video. He was talking about um, Errol Spence's career. No, what did he say? Al Heyman's business tactics could damage Errol Spence's reputation or something like that, right? And it was a really good video how he broke it down. Now, he, his, his opinion is that Al Heyman don't got no money for the fight. You know, and you hear a few other guys, quite a few guys say the reason why this fight really ain't happening is because they ain't got no money to pay these dudes. Right. But then the mainstream is telling us Crawford wants transparency. The lawyers got to hash out their thing. The networks are battling for the fight. There's a lot of different fucking things going on. Right. But Al Heyman's business tactics. Well, Errol Spence right now is not necessarily looked at in a good light. And like I asked earlier on my more recent video in regards to Spence, where is Errol Spence? This silence um, is kind of driving his fans crazy. His fans are um, really just trying to just damage control all over the place, right? And, and I mean, they're doing what they've got to do as fans to ride with their guy. But Errol Spence, you know, I don't know if Al Heyman tells him not to say anything. I don't know if his team or the, the, the management tell him not to say anything. But whatever the case may be, Errol Spence now is looked at as the new Keith Thurman. These tactics, right? These tactics that they employ. And over the years, a lot of PBC fighters, especially the ones that's a little bit more popular, caught a lot of heat. Maybe ones outside of Deontay Wilder because he just he's looking for the smoke. But a lot of these other dudes who like to say, I want this first. I want to do that first. I need a tune up. You know, they, they catch a lot of heat from boxing fans. Thorough box fans who want to see leather flying, right? But these dudes over the years, man, you know, lack of inacti lack of activity, you know, Keith Thurman mentioned that on his me more recent rant in regards to Terrence Crawford. He said, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm inactive, but it's okay. You know, and all this shit. Nah, bro, it's not okay. It's not okay. You should have close to 40 fights by now, Keith. Close to 40 fights by now. I'm not quite sure how um, I think Al Heyman I, I'm not quite sure what Al Heyman should do I'm not quite sure if any of this stuff is true right it's a lot of hearsay a lot of rumors a lot of things get leaked out and fans take it and run with it and maybe add something to it or take something away from it but what I do know at this particular moment, PBC Al Heyman and Errol Spence is looked at like they're the ones that didn't really want to make this fight happen. That's just what it's looking like. Is that what it really is? Who knows? It's just to be a lot of a lot of inactive fighters. A lot of uncertainty. And now that Terrence Crawford came over there, right? We still ain't got this fight with Spence. And it leads you to believe that if he can't even get Errol Spence in the ring, how is he going to get Keith Thurman in the ring? How is he going to get Jamel Charlo in the ring? How is he going to get any premier boxing champion in the ring? Don't look like it's too possible. And now I think fans have since forgot that this fight was even a thing, you know, as far as negotiations. Because, I mean, shit, we ain't, we ain't getting nothing from it. We've been going back and forth and talking about it for months. 
Still I got no fight. Ain't got no kind of fight at all. Who's who's to blame? How many how 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 long can fans blame Bud? Hashtag blame Bud. How long are, are are the guys who blame Bud? How long are you guys gonna continue to blame Bud when he continuously jumping over every hurdle that's in front of him just to make this fight happen? And him wanting to see transparency over the funds, I see some guys kind of poking fun of that. Like, why do he need to see all that? Because if he don't oversee, they could they could be short ball short short changing him, and he won't even you know. It wouldn't even make sense for him not to have transparency over the funds. Especially if he's not getting a guarantee. This is one of the main narratives that's out there right now. So, I mean, look. I don't think nothing like that should really hold up the fight. I don't think that's too much to ask, if I'm honest. Especially if you're doing this in good faith. Especially if you're doing this in good faith. But man, you scroll through YouTube. It's all you when you when we talk in boxing. It's a lot. That's all you seeing. PBC, Al Heyman, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. That's all you seeing. That's all you seeing. It's unfortunate though. It's unfortunate that Errol Spence now is looked at as like the new Keith Thurman. Because Keith Thurman was in his same boat when he was the man with the belts. When he was out in public saying things people didn't want to hear. And then when Errol Spence was on his bumper, you, you really just didn't see him no more. And now Errol Spence is essentially doing the same thing with Terrence Crawford. It's hilarious. Except with this, these two guys were in negotiations for a fight. Errol Spence and Keith Thurman, that, didn't even, that, that's, that name even came close. And those two guys been on the same side of the street their whole careers, right? They've been on Premier Boxing Champions, <laughs> and they still never fought each other. Did they really want this fight with Bud? Did they think Crawford would take the 35% or whatever it alleged that he took? Did they think he would go this far in negotiations? Tim Smith and these guys... They already seemed like they was like, oh, man, he better than I was Daniel Kennehan. And, you know, he he got, got to be realistic. And, you know, it seemed like going going into it, they wasn't really going into this thing with good, in good faith to make the biggest fight in boxing. But like I said before, you guys, Bud is bad for business. Bud Crawford is bad for business. I said it before on the stream, and if you never heard me give you the reason why, I'm going to give it to you now. Um He's bad for business because he's not signed with them. He's bad for business because he can beat him. He's bad for business because if he beats Errol Spence, moves up, beats Jamel Charlo, you know, there's nothing left for Terrence Crawford. He's not a 25-year-old fighter. He's a 35-year-old fighter. So even if they did have an option to work with Crawford for the rest of his career, X amount of fights, he's 35 years old. And he's likely going to be out the door soon anyway. So essentially Crawford can come up in there, sweep PBC, and then right off to the sunset and then boom, everything they built up, all the fighters they built up, all the things they had did over the years, boom, shot right down. Bud Crawford is bad for business. He's bad for business because he's not necessarily on their team neither. You know, if he was on their team, it'd be a little bit different. They can work with it over, you know, work with him, et cetera, et cetera. But he's not with PBC. He's, he'll he'll be a visitor um, for the time being. Bad for business. Bud is bad for business. Bad for business. But they got to deal with him. And now Errol Spence's name is attached to Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford name is attached to Errol Spence. I mean, these guys really, they got to fight. But right now, the narrative is looking like Errol Spence don't want the fight. That's just what it's looking like. I'm not saying he necessarily don't want to fight, but the narrative is that his side is stalling them out. They don't want the fight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So how do they go fix this? Well, Errol Spence come out with one of those cryptic tweets. 
so we could decipher it. That's what you do. But we ain't ever heard nothing. He said, this, if it don't happen this year, it likely won't happen at all. And I think if it don't happen at all, that'd be the worst thing for Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Crawford is the biggest, best fight out there for him. B both fighters. Drum Boots Ennis is a high-risk, low-reward. Elemante Stanionis is a high-risk, low-reward. But don't be surprised if we see Keith Thurman, Errol Spence Jr. Even though Errol Spence said he'll never fight that guy. Keith Thurman also threw his name in the hat to fight Terrence Crawford. Again. But do we believe Keith? Do we believe Keith Thurman? Because every time he talk about wanting to fight, he always got to say what he needs or wants. Or, nah, bro, just, just say you want to fight. Send the contract. Well, send what contract? You got to give you the term sheet first, bro. You got to read the term sheet first, bro. You got to get the term sheet first. You just don't sign a contract. You ain't about to just sign a contract. Come on, Keith. You know how this shit goes. Keith Thurman know how this shit goes. But will Keith Thurman fight Errol Spence instead? I don't, I don't know. I think that's a fight that they'll likely try to make versus putting Errol Spence in there with a dangerous guy like um, Drum Boots Ennis. However... The IBF hasn't had a mandatory from him since Carlos Ocampos, who's also fighting this weekend, by the way, against Sebastian Fedora at 154 pounds. He hasn't had a mandatory since. And then the IBF, they've had it standing on the step aside for the Ugas Pacquiao fight. It's going to be his time soon, too. So Errol Spence is going to be tied up with mandatories for the next how long? If he don't fight Terrence Crawford. One would imagine if he beat Stanley on his first, if he got to fight that guy first, um, then he'll have to fight Boots in his next because IBF will be knocking on his door. Like, dude, you haven't fought a mentor in years, man. These guys in our, in our sanctioned body has been waiting. Welcher waiting. We've been Welcher waiting for a long time. A lot of waiting in the welterweight division, man. A lot of waiting. We should have been had an undisputed champion, if I'm honest. If 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 the if the politics of boxing wasn't such in, the, in, in so much in the way, if the fighters really really wanted to fight to prove themselves, we would have been had an undisputed champion that welterweight. We'd have been had it. But guys like to collect a few belts, then there's a killer on the horizon. Then they may want to pull out, you know, act like they injured. Oh, I'm not gonna say they act like they injured, but they want to have some injuries and they you know they gone for a long time and you know. But will Al Heyman's business model affect Errol Spence's reputation? That's a really, really good question. Because Errol Spence had a great reputation. Great reputation. I mean, shit. He was a golden boy. And now he ain't looked at in the same light. He's not. He don't seem like that same aggressive guy who, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the big fish. But every time I go on the internet, that's all I'm seeing. That's all I'm seeing. But what I also, what I saw is Blue Blood is Team Bud. Blue Blood is Team Bud once again. I don't know, you guys. We got Chris Banks this weekend. Connor Ben. That should be pretty interesting. Sebastian Fedora, Carlos Ocampos. Those are the fights we got this weekend. But yeah, man. Um I'm not I'm not sure, man. Al Heyman gonna have to do something. Is it Al Heyman? I don't know. But when the good things happen, people tend to put Al Heyman's name on it. So when the bad things happen and we can't just subtract sub, subtract his name from it when he's really a part of it. Because sometimes people like to snatch Al Heyman out of it, then the fighter takes all the heat. And it really may not even be the fighter. Errol Spence may have a gag order on him not to really mention anything about the fight. And Errol Spence is a company man. He's gonna do what he, he's gonna do what he's told from Al Heyman. If that's what really is going on. If Earl's, is, is that the reason why he ain't mentioning nothing about this fight? If that's the reason why. 
but yeah, you guys, it was just a monologue video. Um, that's that. I still think that's a really interesting question because Errol Spence had a great reputation as a fighter, and now it's not. It's just not looking like it's the same as it once was. But yeah, man, hit that like button for your boy. Peace out.